Good morning, everyone. If you all would please stand with us and join us in worship. Uh, so, as a small treat, y'all can sit down, um, but as a small treat for everybody, literally a treat for everybody, I think we have the kids who will be coming in here and kind of presenting uh, a snack? A <laughs> snack? Is that it? Which is good, since we had no breakfast this Which morning. is good, because we had no breakfast this morning. <laughs> it's family Sunday. It's the first Sunday of the month. It's the first Sunday of the year. And so we have candy canes for everyone. So as we're handing those out, uh, we'll go ahead and continue with our praise and worship. Um, but hopefully everyone grab a candy cane for me as well. Okay. <laughs> yes. to sing your song again, whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes, bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his soul. Thousand reasons for my heart to find. 
worship his holy name and sing like never before and oh my soul I'll worship your holy name I'll worship your holy name God I'll worship your As you can see, we're a little bare-boned up here with just Mary Sue doing an amazing job on the piano. Would everyone stand up and sing out on this next song with us? morning to lift up Jesus. No one else but him. And we appreciate the spirit that we sense here this morning. God is here. He surely is. And uh, well, this message, I don't think it's too long, so some Sometimes preachers can just get carried away. I'd like for us to stand this morning, and I've got the New American Standard. I think that's what it is. Yes, New American Standard Bible, and so it might be a little bit different. And I'll give you a moment. I'm going to read a couple scriptures out of First Chronicles. Now, that is on page... Anyway, 1 Chronicles, the fourth chapter, in verse 9, this is not a normal uh, New Year's message. It's not, but uh, we trust that God will be here and help us, and our hearts can just be absolutely open to Him. That's why we're here, isn't it, really? Really? To give our very best to him. <clears throat> the scripture says in verse 9 of chapter 4, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother named him Jabez, saying, Because I bore him with pain. Now, I'm debating whether to go on and read this or later on read it, but I'll read the 10th verse in case I mess up later. Now, Jabez called.
called on the God of Israel. I love that. And I need to quit being so emotional. I understand that. Saying, oh, that you would bless me indeed. It's familiar scripture to us. And enlarge my border that your hand might be with me and that you would keep me from harm, that it may not pain me. And here's the answer. And God granted him what he requested. Let's pray together, shall we? Our loving Father, what a delight it is to come and worship you. What a thrill it is, Lord Jesus, to come into your divine presence. And we do sense the Spirit of the Lord here this morning. We sense his presence in the testimonies given. We sense your presence right now. Lord, would you come and open up all of our hearts Help us this morning, Lord, not to have one ounce of resistance toward your will for each one of us. We pray this morning, and we ask it in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord. And everyone said, Amen. Oh, you may be seated. God can help us overcome our past. And that's really the title of this message. So we can accomplish, quote, great things for him. And I do suppose... The greatest thing we can do for God, not only worship him and acknowledge who he is, that's really the greatest, believe it or not. And boy, right underneath that and so close of great things is to try, I said try, to win somebody to Jesus. It's up to an individual, it's up to the Holy Spirit, but it's also up to us to share the good news of Jesus Christ. We live, beloved, in an age of victimus, or victims, I guess I should say. And this is, this is not very positive, I, I know this. Uh, but it's the truth, nevertheless. There are a lot of people, not everybody, of course, but a lot of people no longer want to be held responsible for their personal behavior. <laughs> yeah, you really on the ball. <laughs> but it is true. Everything they do wrong is somebody else's fault. Blame it on parents, if you will. Blame it on society. Or maybe I should just blame it on bad breaks in life. Or anything else that comes to my mind. Well, several years ago now, my brother-in-law, Madeline's brother, ran a Shell gas station. And uh, a man came in and robbed him. I don't know if you remember this or not, Madeline. But they pursued him. The robber got injured. 
And guess what? He sued. And guess what? Shell Company settled with him. Now, that's been several years ago, and I think it's gotten much, much worse than that time. If we're not careful, Christians, hear me this morning, can fall into this mold of thinking. I mean, the truth is, none of us has a flawless past. None had a perfect childhood. The truth is, beloved, no one gets through life without his or her own particular set of problems. Isn't that true? It really is. Like some of our friends in the world, it is sometimes easy for us to give up on ourselves and make excuses for not being at our best for Jesus Christ. Now the scripture passages for this morning tells the story of a man who had every right to label himself a victim and give up, if you will, on trying to make everything better. Well, the truth is, he did not take that road. He stayed away from it. In fact, he went the opposite. He dedicated himself and what he had to be for God. He gave life its best shot and beloved became a shining example of what God wants to do in all of our lives. Isn't that good news? And of course, the good news is we all can do that as well. Jabez, a man named Disgrace. That actually is what his name meant. Cultural thinking in biblical times believed a person's name reflected his or her character. When a person's character or situation in life changed, the name changed who? Biblical examples included Jacob, Changed to Israel, his name. And Abram to Abraham. I think it was, wasn't it Saul changed to Paul? Well, Jabez's name itself meant disgrace. But aren't we glad this morning, beloved, that we have a God who wants to change our name in a spiritual sense, make us more like Jesus. His mother probably named him this because of the family was in such, such disgrace, and she somehow had lost her positive outlook on life. Oh, the devil wants to get us to look more negative on life, doesn't he? He really does. My mom always said, I don't want to give the devil his due, so i got to be careful with that. But Satan wants to destroy us. He wants us to just simply give up. And the truth is, there's not a whole lot of positivity going on around us these days, is there? I mean, it just seems like everywhere we turn, there's some problem, something going on. Well, his family probably lived in poverty, talking about Jabez, and had lost their inheritance and property. Jabez's father 
and brothers brought shame to the family name with all of their alcoholism. That can destroy. You and I know that, if we're honest. Alcohol can destroy people's lives. And it took place in this family. So the family had a very negative reputation in the community. I mean, no doubt Jabez was made fun of by other children when growing up, both for his unusual name and for his family's bad reputation. However, good news. Good news happens when we trust in God. Well, the second point of this message here is Jabez became a man of prayer. Isn't that great? First Chronicles 4.10 tells us that. And so as he grew older, Jabez cried out to God and asked for his help. Now how's that for a good prayer? God, help me. I need your help. Well, that's a great prayer, really. And dear hearts, all of us, I care not what state or how you find yourself this morning, spiritually, you can pray that same kind of prayer. And the good news is, God heard the prayer. And he enlarged his borders. Friends, listen, we have one that wants to do so much for us. But it's up to us to make certain decisions. We need to be more positive. I know that. Uh, my family can attest to that. Don't you say a word. <laughs> but he asked for help from God to bless his life. That your hand would be with me, he asks. And only if God can receive the glory should be the reason why we pray that kind of prayer. Everything we do, beloved, somehow needs to go to God. We need to somehow illustrate the goodness and the love of Jesus Christ in this lost and dying world. But good news, God heard his prayer. He asked for land, actually, so he could make something of himself. I know on the surface that sounds like a little selfish prayer, so I could make something of myself. But God answered prayer. Why? Because God knew the intent of the prayer for God's Glory, really. And that's what changed Jabez's course all the way through life. And so he asked for God to watch out for him as he attempted to overcome his past. Really, that was a bad reputation as a family in the community. And the good news, beloved, is we too can turn our lives completely over to God like that. Aren't you glad for that reality, Amen. that truth? He asked for God to watch out for him as he attempted to overcome his painful past. He asked to be free from the painful memories of his past and the pain that Came with it. If he assumed the lifestyle of his fathers and brothers, he couldn't get past it if he followed their footsteps. 
So we called on God. Aren't you glad? I, I know I'm repeating myself. I know that. But aren't you glad, dear hearts, that we can call on God at any time, step back and put everything into his hands? Well, for something definite, it was a prayer like that. It was a prayer for God to intervene. And all of these requests reflect the re realization that with God's help, Jabez believed he could amount to something in life. Friend, I've got to stop there and simply say, if you do exactly what Jabez did, and you too can be all that God wants you to be. And God will magnify your life for him and for his glory. He was not going to pity his situation or fall into the temptations of his relatives. He wanted, beloved, to do better with his life and bring honor and glory to God. Well, here's the third point. I'm getting down. <laughs> he was a man of discipline and devotion. Now, I'm not going to read the six verses, but in Jeremiah 35, 1 through 6, it gives us this idea. Jabez did something really for himself, and he did it to reestablish God in his life and his family's life. In fact, he became such a prominent citizen of that city, or they named that city, if you will, after him, Jabez. And it's found in 1 Chronicles chapter 2, verse 55. Most Bible scholars believe it was named after him because that's what the Scripture indicates, at least. And I do, too. God wants to do so much for us as individuals and always remember whatever we do for God. It is for his glory and not ours. Well, <clears throat> this was a very special city known, catch this now, as a place of religious study and the copying of scriptures, Old Testament scriptures. History records that Jabez himself started this religious school. Isn't that amazing how God can take a negative, and turn it around and make a positive. I believe he wants to do that in our lives as well. He also started a group known as the, I may stumble with this, but Rechabites. They were noted for their clean, holy living. That was his influence. And my friends, we need, we really do, to have an influence on all those around us. We need to somehow be positive and elevate Jesus Christ so that other, others can see that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Well, they were also especially known for their refusal to drink any alcoholic beverages. Amen. The very thing that had caused his family such disgrace, and he recognized that. And he knew that there had to be an overall change. 
in the family, in the community. And the good news, of course, is God wants change for us. I don't know about your personal past. I don't know what makes us all tick inside, but I do know that, that if we just give everything we have to our God, he will somehow, some way, elevate our lives for his glory and his good. Amen. And if I know your heart this morning, and I don't, only God does, but if I know your heart, you want that exact thing today. I think that's one of the reasons why you're here on Sunday morning worshiping God, is somehow, Lord, help us as individuals to make a special difference. Well, many years after Jabez's time, Jeremiah offered wine to some Rechabites as an object lesson. But guess what? They were deeply offended and recounted how they were carrying on the tradition of Jabez by not touching alcohol. My dad drank quite heavy. And I could remember some very disappointing times in the home, mainly because of alcohol. I don't know much about it. I was three or four years old. I can barely remember this. My dad grabbed me up, put me on his knee, and gave me a little sip of alcohol. Terrible thing. It was terrible. <laughs> I hated the flavor. Of course, Mom went berserk. But, beloved, it can destroy people's lives. I don't think I'm talking to anybody here that's got that problem. But I do know that if you're acquainted at all with that, you'll understand what I'm talking about. It can destroy everything around you. Leave it alone. Well, those Rechabites, as I've already said, became a living example and a testimony of the powerful influence of Jabez. Let me try somehow to personalize this a little bit, including myself. What kind of influence do you have? on other people. God wants to take who you are with all of your uh, personality quirks. Do you have any? <laughs> and embrace himself in your heart so that you can be some kind of positive influence on people that needs to hear the name of Jesus Christ. Christ so loved us so much, beloved, that he went to an old rugged cross, gave himself so freely that you and I can be set free of some of these things in our life. Aren't you glad this morning? And I'm not making fun of people who have an alcoholic problem. I don't mean that at all. But I am saying that if we just simply turn to the one who can set us free, 
we will be free indeed, and we can have an influence on somebody else that's crying out for help. Oh, God, send somebody to me. I suspect there's more people than we can imagine that in their secret time, by themselves, that's under these kind of circumstances, have prayed that God send somebody to help me. And the good news is, God will answer that prayer. Well, in conclusion this morning, God is still a miracle-working God. And that's his business today, beloved. The God who heard and answered the prayer of Jabez. Guess what? We'll hear your prayer as well. Jabez humbled himself before God and acknowledged his need for divine help. Then, the good news is, he worked hard to make something of his life. God honored his faith and his effort. He regained his inheritance restored the family name, established a religious school and an order of godly people, and a city was named after him. You see, Jabez prayed, God, enlarge my border. God heard his prayer and answered the prayer. God blessed him abundantly beyond his prayer request. That's amazing thought. We may pray a prayer and expect a certain way it to be answered. And many times beyond our wildest imagination, God blesses far beyond what we even think think. Amen. God blessed him abundantly beyond his prayer request. God can help anybody, beloved, to overcome your past and my past and accomplish great things in his name. If I have one prayer this morning, it would be Lord, help me to win somebody to you. Let's stand, shall we? Uh, and if our uh, band, praise band, <laughs> would come up. Uh, I know this is not profound. I understand that. But just maybe there might be somebody that in the depths of their heart, would simply say, I need that truth to come deep in my heart. And we're not going to tarry long, but we're going to open the altar on this very first day of 2023. And if you might be that one person that would say, I really want what God has got for me. Can I meet you at an altar of prayer and other people gather around and pray? I don't know what God's got, but I would ask you this. Just be open and be obedient to the voice of God this morning. was
Let's uh, bow our heads this morning, shall we, and I'll pray, and then the band will continue on with the worship service. Our loving Father, help us to be real. Help us to be genuine. And Lord, I thank you for your goodness and your love. And if there's anyone either listening online or anyone in our sanctuary that really has a deep need, I would pray this prayer. Lord, answer their prayer. Come, Lord Jesus. Help us when we leave the sanctuary that we all can say, man, I've been in the presence of Almighty God. We ask these things. We pray, Lord, that we would just simply surrender our own will into your divine hands. For we ask it just now. In the name 
of our soon coming King, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. God bless your heart. You may be seated. Or you can join us in singing either way. <laughs>
couple quick announcements for you all. I'm going to give you the mic so people online can hear you. All right. Robbie Nance, he's going to set up some bowling at the local bowling alley on Friday or Saturday? Saturday at 11 o'clock. Even if you're not a bowler like me, come on out and support us and support whoever's bowling. And uh, let's share some Jesus to everybody at the bowling alley. Amen. You can get a hold of Robbie or myself if you're interested so that we know how many lanes to reserve. And while you're out, we also have a children's quiz here next Saturday as well. So uh, just make it a full day of, uh, of church and fellowship. What time is that? After? Starts at 10 here. So come here, check some of it out, and then go bowling. All right. Thank you, guys. God bless you all. Have a great week. We'll see you all next week. All acquaintance be for God and never brought to